Great events create great brands, and it takes a village to put on an event that engages, excites, and connects audiences to your brand. And we're that village. I'm Alyssa. I'm Paulina. And I'm Rachel. And you're listening to Great Events, the podcast for all people interested in events and marketing. Hi, everyone. What's going on in the wide, wide world of events? I'm Paulina Giusti, and you're tuning in to the Great Events Podcast. Um, and I am joined with my co-host, Rachel Andrews. Rach, hey. Hi, friend. Today, we have two awesome guest speakers uh, joining us on today's episode. And before I introduce them, I do kind of want to tee up what we're planning to chat about today. Um, we are kind of taking a journey away from the corporate event space and exploring the wonderful creative world of wedding planning. So we've all been to epic weddings before, right? I mean, it's safe to say that a lot of work and extensive project management goes into making a couple's perfect day come alive. And these two ladies who are joining us today are very, very much masters of their craft. And uh, Rachel and I have actually seen it in action. They have um, produced some of the most creative and beautiful and memorable weddings that we've seen. And I'd love to introduce the ladies behind Pivot Productions, the founders, uh, what they do, the services they offer, etc. So I'd love for you both to introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about the role, about the organization, and then we'll get into a great discussion about, you know, the industry at large. Um, Bianca, I'd love to start with you. Hi, so I'm Bianca. Um, So Victoria and I met a long time ago, um, but we actually started out in events in our college years at the reunions office at UVA. Um, So we actually started working together, planning all of the summer reunions for everyone. Um, And we stuck through it through all four years. Um, And, you know, somehow we are still friends. Uh, (laughs) And that's really kind of where our start into events really took off. Um, And how we kind of bonded over something that was so, you know, we turned it into a career, but it was something that we both personally loved doing and having it consume so much of our time. Um, Yeah. And so then after, after graduation, we kept in touch. We stayed friends. We decided to kind of do this on our own. Um, We both have a background in corporate and nonprofit. Um, Then, you know, we decided let's take it away from that and kind of do her own thing. But I'll let Vic kind of talk more about herself. Yeah. Um, that's the main, the main gist is that it started from school and we both, I would say fell in love pretty simultaneously with events. I for one had not found a career path that was going to align with who I am and what I'm passionate about until that random weekend in probably what, 2013. Um, so yeah, after that was in corporate, nonprofit, et cetera. And then uh, we found our way into this at the end of 2017, which we can get into too, of kind of our moment of inspiration that created all of this. So I love when a career kind of assembles in, you know, a more youthful headspace, career space, and, and you get to kind of see that passion turn into something um like I just said, into into a career. And I think you were just alluding to this, Vic, that moment, right? The moment of impact, the pivotal moment, if you will, pun completely intended. Um, yeah, I'd love to know how you started the company, what inspired you both to, to build and launch your own company, because you just mentioned 2017 was sort of the impetus year of let's make this, you know, part of our lives. But the company kind of came to be on the heels or I'm sorry, at the outset of the pandemic. Isn't that right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, about that. You know, we had spent a few years um, since starting in events about a year to two out formally since college uh, working traditional nine to five jobs. And we had left our first wave of um, positions following college, got new jobs. We're both very excited, but just felt this sort of emptiness or, you know, happiness, but not really truly content with the day-to-day life or, you know, what we were working towards in those nine to five jobs. So we were sitting at district winery, the restaurant inside district winery, which 
long story short, we had our first wedding there officially under the company this May, which was a very significant full circle moment for us. But we were sitting there late December having a dinner to celebrate these new jobs. And we just said, yeah, what if we just try to do this? We know we're really great at this. We've been working on, you know, perfecting this craft, our skills, and we got our first client and they paid us thinking back on it. So, so little, Nothing. <laughs> um, it was worth it, but we found a friend of a friend who was in need of some help and we just completely won it with them. And that wedding was October of 2018. It went well, we were enjoying it. And then from there, um, we took on a few more, but it wasn't until I believe like March 7th or 8th, like on our official documentations when we got our LLC um, officially in our hands, certified, whatever you want to call it. And obviously, as we know, the world shut down very shortly after that. Um, yeah, so that was timely or not, depending on how you look at it. Um, but we definitely were able to take advantage then of the huge wedding boom that came on the heels of the pandemic, which has really launched us into a more stable position as a company and a growing position too, moving forward. So our timing was oddly beneficial despite a horrific time for the world. So big risk, big reward, right? (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really great to hear sort of this phased perspective of how your sort of side hustle, your passion kind of grew into this full-time career. Um, But kind of taking a step back for a second, because Rach and I know Bianca, because she used to be a colleague of ours. So I'm sure those who are tuning in right now who maybe, you know, are in the corporate space, association event planning space, they'd love to know, are there any sort of transferable skills or things that you think back of in your corporate role or association role that you're like, thank goodness I acquired those skills because they're certainly still serving me today in this creative wedding space. A thousand percent. I mean, I guess you can say this about anything, but just being able to communicate and communicate exactly what you're trying to say so succinctly to people who don't have, you know, the exact same background that you do um, is a skill that's transferable to to anything, you know. Um, And I think in this specific environment, going from corporate to wedding, that totally translated from having to speak to stakeholders from every different department and different vendors into then translating into, you know, we work with couples and brides and grooms, but more often than not, we work with, you know, brides' parents and groom's parents and their sisters and their maids of honor and their best men. Um, And so it's being able to kind of juggle the communication and know how to speak about all those different topics with these different stakeholders because it's still a stakeholder at the end of the day. It's got to be overwhelming too, like for, you know, someone, someone that's coming to you to, to help them run like the biggest, well, one of the biggest days of their, their lives. That's always been like, you know, hard for me to grasp. And one thing I say to, you know, my family, when they, they assume that I just plan wet or, you know, weddings or parties for a living. And I have to explain to them what corporate events are. Um, but, but going into what you guys do, like taking your skills into that side of the industry, you can kind of speak both languages, which is super cool. Um, I don't know, like for you guys, I'm, I'm sure you've had those, those moments with bride and grooms where they're like, I can just do this myself, but when you, when they start doing it themselves, are they freaking out at all the things that need to be accomplished? Because, you know, I've, I'm, we've all been involved in planning events and planning weddings um, in the past and people that are not in event planning or event management or event design, look at all the things that you have to sign and do and have that panic moment. Is that when they kind of come to you guys? Or you, would you say most of your customers know that they're like, we can't do this alone. We need you. How is that? How's the, how's that happened for you all now? I feel like our clientele over the last few years, there's actually been a few event planners that have come to us to plan their weddings. And that's a different dynamic because they, they get it at the onset, right? They know it's going to be a lot. They're looking for some support. They understand, you know, implications financially, et cetera, logistically. Um, I would say what, you know, what we find the most without, you know, speaking for B is that there's couples that will come to us and think like, oh, I can easily get my vendor team. I can pick a caterer. I can pick a florist. You know, that you could say is like the quote unquote easy part, even though that comes with a lot of like contract reviews, financial, you know, evaluations. But 
once that part stops and all the real logistics start of what time can I load into this space, you know, what does the schedule look like? All of those overwhelming questions, plus your family, maid of honor, spouse, et cetera, asking. I think that's when I see the most people's eyes open up. Like they pick their venue and they pick their cater. And now they're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a busy year. And I don't want to do this alone. Yeah, I can imagine like that freak out moment where they're like, I need help. And then you guys come in like shining heroes. Coming from corporate and these, you know, they had big budgets that they're not spending their own money. They have to be mindful, but it's so different when someone's, their dad's pulling out of their retirement account or they're pulling out of their joint savings. Like it's so much more is at stake with each decision, um, which is what we found that I think is a transition in the opposite direction from going to these other big events. We have to be a lot more mindful of every cost and line item um, because there's just so much more of that personal affiliation. But on the flip side, you know, when things go wrong in the corporate nonprofit world, I think the, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry. When things go wrong, like the expectations are that things are going to be perfect for the corporate nonprofit, right? There's a lot more at stake. Whereas when a wedding, if there's ever any issues, they fall back on like, I'm marrying my person. So we still expect it to be as flawless as possible, but it's just, it's different balances based on like what the true goal is of a wedding versus what you're trying to get out of a corporate nonprofit engagement with those kind of guests and attendees. I would say, you know, it's interesting that you guys, I think, juggle one more logistic than corporate event professionals, and that's emotion. And I think that's kind of what you were alluding to, right? You know, you can kind of detach yourself from the breakout session that, you know, lost internet or had a, had the wrong slides or what have you, but you guys are sort of managing people's emotions at the same time. And that is in and of itself a, 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 a big, big, uh, you know, logistical challenge, I think, each time. And, you know, something that I'm thinking about because I got married a while ago, but on the heels of a pandemic, there's been a lot of shift across the industry. Of course, so many industries changed, meetings and events industry most notably, right? But the wedding industry has seen significant evolution. I mean, we're talking non-traditional wedding dates, um, venues. Um, I mean, are there more elopements? Have elopements even gotten more complex and complicated and need your guys' support? Talk us through some of what these evolutions um, or trends that you've seen as a result of, um, you know, COVID-19. Honestly, I think one of the biggest trends that, you know, I think should be here to stay is that so many people have had to postpone and delay this, you know, this huge day. We have a couple getting married next year. They've delayed it for four years at this point. Right. And I think what everyone is now realizing is like a wedding is expensive and it's tons of money. So why waste it on doing things that like they just don't want to have to, you know, include or be a part of and what our favorite client is the type of people that we really, you know, vibe with is the couples who tell us we just want to have a party where we happen to get (laughs) married. And that's exactly what we want to plan anyways. Um, So I think that's just been one of, one of the biggest trends is that people really just want to celebrate and they are a little less concerned about a lot of the formalities I'd say, Um, you know, we love a five minute ceremony <laughs> and a lot of other people have loved that too. Um, and I mean, we just did a super small, like 30 person wedding that was just like a really lovely dinner for everyone, family style. And they just wanted everyone to get together and it was just super personal. So I think it's a lot more of these small touches where, you know, they just want to celebrate everything versus, you know, I have to have a certain kind of tradition or, you know, centerpiece whatever like i don't you don't really need all of those things um so i think people have just really thrown thrown in the towel and feel like obligations i love that non-traditional look at it it's like make it what you want it's your day it's no one else's day that's what i've said for years about weddings it's just like these poor people get forced into doing stuff that their grandparents like require them to do and i get it there's a certain tradition to things and something to be cherished about that but there's also something nice about having a dinner with 30 people or having something nice in your backyard, like a party, but you just happen to get married at it. I love that concept. I think a lot of people do too. Um, you know, you, you got your people on one side that want to do all the bells and whistles and you got the people that they just want the day to be special. And, you know, 
all the moving parts of all of the cake cutting and the garter and the the smashing of a glass or whatever the the, the family traditions are um you know there's ways to incorporate it non-traditionally i love that that you guys are focused on that yeah and i'd say we still have clients that want to pursue the bells and whistles but they happily want to pursue that and that's great with us like if you're really happy with that outcome we want it to be your day. What we don't want is you getting roped into the bells and whistles because of pressures of, you know, financial support from families or, you know, not feeling secure and having a 50 person wedding. Like you are just as loved as someone who may have a 200 person wedding and it's going to be less expensive and more intimate than you could ever imagine. So to your point, you know, Rachel, we just want people to do what they want because you really hopefully only get to do this once. Um, and yeah, it should just be nothing other, other than like, you know, something that's a reflection of the two of you and the kind of people that you are versus, you know, a different version based on, you know, societal pressures. So I have to ask this just because I always hear people say wedding season. Do you guys have seasons or is it all year round at this point? The work is definitely all year round always. Um, but the times of year that the weddings happen, especially in, in you know, the DC area where we're based out of is definitely seasonal just because it gets really, really cold in the winter and really, really hot in the summer and people want to be outdoors. So um, the spring and the fall. I would say I would add to that because we're still on the heels of the wedding boom, right? And we have definitely these seasons where it is crazy, but then we also have couples, someone just came to us, wants to get married as soon as possible and knows the only way to do that is to get married in the winter. So they're getting married mid-February in DC, which will still be beautiful, but we're seeing more couples sacrifice their vision of like an October wedding or a May wedding and just go for, I want to get married soon. And I know it's going to be a lot harder to lock down vendors in those prime seasons. Also more expensive, like venues are more expensive. There's, you know, upcharges for vendors in those peaks months. So we're seeing people not only consider a different day of the week, but also maybe a non-traditional month, which is also like July and August here. Um, because they can get married sooner and maybe do it for less. I know, you know, we didn't, we didn't talk about this before, but like take us a little bit through your guys' process because I feel like your personal touch and your brand, like you guys bring a unique perspective to it. I know the non-traditional. So like if somebody reaches out to you, how do you take it from there with that, that potential client? We always get on a Zoom a call or something. I think one of like one of their first clients we met them at a bar and like we just want to kind of chat with you and kind of figure out what you guys want to do do we like you i don't know (laughs) um so that's kind of the first step is that you know do we think that we're gonna like get along with these people do we think they're gonna like us because there's no point in wasting anyone's time wasting anyone's money um because we're only going to be able to produce something so great if we actually enjoy spending this time with you and trust us we will spend a lot of time with you um we are on the phone with you we are texting you we are always with you um we get some ptsd when you know a wedding's over and we don't really see anyone anymore Uh, yeah it kind of comes in with that first prospect call we give everyone a custom proposal because everyone's got you know different sizes, venues, locations, and from there we'll we'll um, contract you and we do a little kind of kickoff meeting where we just kind of want to get an idea of, you know, what are your priorities? What do you want to make sure, you know, happens that day? What are the top three most important things? And what do you want to make sure that your guests take away as well? Um, And that way we can kind of also get an idea of, you know, we like to know what the couple's favorite things are. Like we want to know how they all met and, you know, what their story is. Um, So it's kind of really, I don't know, it's like dating. It's like dating. It's like, well, it's a mutual, it's a mutual relationship. Totally. Exactly. (laughs) I kind of love that concept. Like maybe you should do for your lead prospecting evaluative, you know, vetting process, you know, do we both swipe right on, you know, <laughs> communication style? Do we swipe left on, you know, how much input the mother and of the groom or mother of the bride should have? I think that's hilarious. That would be so fun. It's like we are obviously professional. We're going to produce a flawless event, but we are also very casual as well, um, which we think is like very true to us. We try to make it fun. We try to be approachable cultivate friendships, if you will. Like, I mean, I feel like every wedding day we get to, we're just as excited as these couples are to get, to see them get married. 
And that's what has made this side of events so much more special than like corporate and nonprofit. It's great to see it all come together, but I'm not going to be like getting teary eyed when you do your first look, you know? Um, so I just think we try to take the approach of like really being honest, casual, um, and make it fun. Cause it, we also want the process to be fun as well. Cause there's no use of being stressed out for a whole year. Um, and that's kind of our job. We're supposed to take the stress. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. So, so yeah, we had some client come to us that just said like they got on our website and they just felt like it was fun. It was casual. It was inviting. And like, that is what we're trying to, you know, translate over through our website, through our social media, through our conversations and like, you know, have some clients that turn into friends, which is like very special as the weddings wrap up. That's the best. And, you know, just not to make it always about corporate event planners, but I know so many people who are listening right now are in that camp, but don't we feel like we do a better job when we're partnering with vendors who are also friends? Like, I think there's something that's, you know, uniform across the industry that if you love the people you work with, you're going to produce an amazing product, whether you're on the creative wedding planning space, or if you're in, you know, the corporate space producing a breakout session, right? Like there's some synergy in being your authentic self and showcasing that in your working environment. So I just, I love that you guys bring that up because I think it's something that the corporate side loses sight of. It doesn't have to be transactional. We can be developing a relationship in this very business-like format um, uh, and experience. So I love that you guys lead with that in terms of your your business offering. Um, okay. Not to be super predictable here, but there's got to be a rose and thorn moment in the every career, right? And we're going to start rose. We don't even need to do thorn, to be honest, because I feel like th- there's there's it gets touchy, right, in the wedding side of things. But your rose, like, what is one of the what is your favorite moment? And I'd love to hear from both of you. What is your favorite moment throughout the process, or has there been a standout experience that you say? This is reinvigorating why I do what I do. It can be like a favorite wedding. It could be a favorite moment at weddings in general. It can be an unusual event that you plan that's been memorable. Like all of those things. I feel like there's always something that sticks out. Where you've gone above and beyond together, where you you found yourselves laughing over a glass of wine saying, I can't believe we just did that, you know? I would say... It's been interesting because I feel like we've had one of those moments after each wedding because we have gone from like our, our weddings have escalated in a positive way, be it like, wow, I can't believe we just pulled that off. Wow, I can't believe like into different facets. And like, for example, we have, I would say our first large luxury wedding in three weeks um, that I know will definitely be a moment where we are like, holy shit, I can't believe that just happened. We did that. What are they bringing like an elephant inside and like what, uh, ice sculptures everywhere? What's going on? It's a full destination wedding weekend, which is the first of its kind that we produce under our brand. So it's, I do feel like as the years have gone on, like our, what we have produced has escalated or we've gone through a spring season. Like we just had where we had six weddings in eight weeks. And that was one we definitely poured out a glass of wine. I'm like, I cannot believe we are still standing and just produce six, you know, smooth wedding weekends. But I think for me, I, we both are probably, I would say passionate about, you know, making life's moments extremely special. And to me, like the moment at the end of the night where the mother of the bride or the bride or the groom just embraces us and like feels all of their hard work to come to fruition. Cause obviously it's not like they're not involved in just knowing that one of the most, you know, cherished moments of someone's life has been so memorable, memorable, you know, partially due to like what we contributed. That to me just is really special. We both are all about just celebrating life's moments. And I think that's why this is a lot more fulfilling than the corporate side. Yeah. And it's always great at the end of the night. Cause I, I mean, I don't think it'll shock anyone that, you know, brides uh, are typically a little more involved in the planning process with us. Um, that's not to say we've had tons of grooms who are very opinionated about many things. <laughs> um, but it's always fun to see, you know, I, I can just think of almost every single wedding where at the end of the night, everyone is so appreciative, but the groom just will turn to us like, I didn't really think we needed you, but I'm really glad you are here. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. Thank you. 
I am loving your social media posts and I am very much looking forward to your destination wedding and watching that come to fruition on your social. For those listeners uh, that want to follow our, our gals here, um, they're at, at a pivot production. Um, you guys have like a full social media plan. Like take us through all of that. That's, I feel like when I go on Instagram or, you know, Twitter or where, wherever, wherever you're following your, your favorite people, Instagram is my, my choice of, um, social media. Um, I just see so many different, um, vendors and suppliers out there, um, producing all sorts of reels and pictures. And it, it's, it's a whole, like, I mean, it takes up a lot of time and I'm sure you guys are, uh, right in lockstep with that. How has that like helped your business and, and how is that showcasing your work? It has definitely helped, cultivate us in in ways that I don't think we necessarily expected. Um, I think we all knew like social media is a marketing tactic. We are there to showcase our work, showcase what we do and show you a little bit behind the scenes of how much work really goes into these events. Um, And we obviously want that to translate into sales and translate into getting those clients who see our work and want to work with us. Um, But I think one of really fun parts about social media that we tend to forget like it is it, it is a little bit more than marketing so it, that social part is still in there um what's been really fun is kind of cultivating these relationships a lot more with vendors um we definitely have a handful of people that we love working with all the time that it's been so great to to reach out and kind of stay in everyone's kind of vicinity and periphery um you know engaging with them because so much of, of our business in the wedding industry is referral based that getting to, you know, we work with these vendors, obviously, throughout the planning process and on the day, but it's so fun to, you know, continue that conversation, and kind of see what they're all up to um, on the social media side. And everyone kind of has the same, you know, gripes about things too. So just kind of fun to compare and contrast and get those relationships out. Yeah. And I would add to it, it took us a while to get to this point where even developing 30 days worth of content was exciting or we were inspired to do that. There were so many pressures for us at the beginning to just post to post or like be active, like just get something up there. But it it was so daunting for us because it didn't feel authentic. And as we touched on earlier, we've tried really hard to stand out because of our authenticity and because of, you know, trying to showcase who we are as friends, as people through the company, through the brand. So now it's been exciting because I feel like we're both more comfortable being who we want to be behind Instagram. And now it's translated to, as Bianca said, these vendor relationships also following our clients as they get pregnant, they get dogs, they, they go through their lives. Exactly. Like just being, knowing we were part of a pivotal moment, if you will, um, in their lives that has now led them to all these other big life stages. Um, yeah, it's just been more fun now that we feel like it's us behind Instagram versus like pressures of, you know, certain look or certain feel or certain cadence of post getting up there. So yeah. And I think people have started to, not that they didn't appreciate what we did before, but really understand like all the Excel files, all the random things, you know, we just put up a reel today about our event kit and what goes into like this luggage of things we bring along to each wedding weekend for every possible scenario under the sun. And so I think revealing that behind the scenes to our friends or vendor friends or clients is just fun to, to just show them what we really do on a day to day in a more formal way. Well, I mean, it's safe to say you guys are building a brand, fostering a com- community and absolutely kicking ass and taking names. So I'm so proud of you both. I've, you know, alluded to this in the beginning of the podcast, but have had the luxury of being a part of a wedding that you two absolutely rocked out. And these two are, like I said, masters of their craft, always a smiling face. They already know before you're about to ask the question what the answer is. So I can't sing their praises enough. Um, You know, if you are a bride listening to today's podcast or your besties a bride or your brother or sister are getting married. Definitely want you guys to reach out to these two. They are just a joy to partner with, a joy to to spend a wedding weekend with. And they are here to help take the stress away from 
planning a wedding. So a big thank you to our friends um, from Pivot Productions. Follow them for all of their fun reels, their feedback and and great stories. Um, And all of you tuning in today, we want to hear what's going on with you. So send us a LinkedIn message, an email at cvent, or I'm sorry, at greatevents at cvent.com or hit me up on Instagram as well. We're happy to take any questions and ideas that you guys all have and make a podcast out of it. So I'm Paulina. Thanks so much for tuning in today and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Great Events, a podcast by Seafoam. If you want more resources on how to make your events great, go to community.cvent.com. That's community.cvent.com. Or if you've got a question for us or just want to say hi, email us at greatevents at cvent.com.